everybody Instagram YouTube and Facebook so we're doing a live demonstration this morning of how to make a summer wreath using dried hydrangeas so hopefully you'll all join in and you'll interact and is there going to be any giveaways today Deirdre? Well we might do yeah we she might, might do. you never know start interacting talk nice to Deirdre and she you never know she's the chief of the giveaways so what's the weather like around the country? This morning in Dublin, we're in Dublin here, this morning it was what we describe as a shite morning in Dublin. It was absolutely lashing rain and it was dark and dismal. But now it has brightened up, the ground is dry, there's no sun, but you know it's a lot brighter and it's not too cold out. So that's the weather forecast for Dublin. So if you're watching from around, around Ireland, and we normally get a couple of Americans, Australians and around Europe, let's know what's the weather like around the country and let's all join in and have a little bit of fun this morning. So if we have anybody from the country, or as I often say, the culture is watching. Now I'm allowed to say culture because I'm married to a culture, okay? And I'm sure if he's watching, he very rarely watches me, but I'm sure if he's watching me now, he's just, he'll say, I can't believe she's after going and buying a, a, a bag of straw. So I wanted to show you how to make your base today using straw. So here in Dublin, the only way we get straw is go to the local pet shop and buy a bag of straw or a bale of straw as I call it. Now again as I said anyone around the country will be laughing at our bale of Dublin straw. This cost me 350 You can probably get one of the big round bales or square bales or whatever they call them for probably 350 in Sligo but unfortunately my husband won't bring me back a bale of straw from Sligo so I'm limited. I have to go to the local pet shop. The other thing is when you're here in Dublin it's very hard to actually rob foliage as we call it. So I wanted some ivy. So that's a bunch of ivy that we buy in. Now again the culture's laughing at the stupid dubs having to buy ivy. Sure this grows absolutely wild everywhere okay. But I buy this in from a foliage farm and it's based down in Wicklow and it's called George Williams Foliage Farm and that's where I buy it. If any of the florists are watching his phone number is 0404 416 So that's Stuart Williams Red Cross County Wicklow. It's a wholesaler and for anybody that wants foliage kind of like in bulk. But that's a bunch of ivy and what I've done with the ivy is I've cut it into lengths. I suppose you would describe it maybe 12 to 15 inches or sorry 12 to 15 centimeters okay so 12 to 15 centimeters and you can see like they're not regular they're not all like some of them are kind of like mad looking shapes okay i approximately i suppose i'm going to use maybe a third of that bunch of ivy just to kind of give you an bernie idea bernie already said it's four euro for a large bale of straw oh there you go bernie <laughs> so the next time bernie you're coming to dublin will you any chance throw in a, a trailer to the back of that car of yours and bring us up a big bale of straw there. Deirdre normally buys the straw for her chickens. That's what she normally buys it in. So that's how she had a couple of, um, well, actually, she you were out of it this morning. I was out of it. So we had to wake Dad up this morning and because the pet shop wasn't open early and I had to wake Dad up and I said, listen, will you run up to the pet shop and get us a bale of straw, a bale of straw, <laughs> a bale of straw, a Dublin bale of straw. We won't I be said, rolling in the hay anyway. No, <laughs> there'll be no rolling in the hay in, that, in the size of that. Now, the um, other thing, go on. Go on, just a couple of check-ins. Okay. Um, so we have Cathy is on, Cathy McGarry. Who's Hiya, Cathy. How are you? She's over in our bloom room. Bernie, how early is from our bloom room as well? Elaine is on from Coventry. Hi, so, Elaine. Um, how are you? Mary Trey's Gordon. No, she's over in the bloom Mary room Mary Trey's well. is, a, is a bloom room member Mary as well. Mary says it's Cloudy and Sligo. Joan is on. She's over in our bloom room. Hiya, too. Joan. How are you? Angela is on from our so loads of bloom, loads of bloom room. So anyone that's just um, wondering, the bloom room is our online students. So all our online students who are attending the online program, they're all in like a private group on Facebook called the bloom room. So we have the participants who started last week and the participants who started this week. And it just means Monday to Friday, half nine till half three, they basically have the full backup and support of us. If they run into any problems, any questions, they need us to go back over anything, we're basically we're on call. We're not on call at the moment because I'm doing a live demonstration at the moment. Also, all our participants who started uh, last week on the online program, they're all getting their flower delivery tonight. So there's great excitement over in their bloom room because Hannon's the haulage company is contacting them all and giving their times for their delivery. 
So I know one of the girls in Tipperary, she got her time at two or three o'clock in the morning or something. So she'll be up early. If you're not um, drinking just wine. Mary, our Deirdre Pike was on. And hey, she Deirdre. Said, she's just watched the video of the queues in Henry Street. I know. Did you see it last night? There was photographs now. I think they were probably Photoshop photographs. But photographs <laughs> of, of the tents outside Penny's waiting on them to open. Can you just, would you be that badly off with a pair of pair knickers? knickers. <laughs> so another, another before you start this, um, just very quickly, just to say hello to the people open Instagram. Instagram. Jenny yeah. Bombeni is hey, over on Jenny, Instagram. Hey, hey, hey. Um, Ashling. Hi, Ashling. Ashling's my favourite niece down in Sligo. Yeah, she said you should have rang me. We would have got you Ivy for free and a bale of straw from your favourite niece in Sligo. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Ashling, what you need to do now is you're going to copy this. I sent you down these wire rings before, so you can get in there now and make your own dough wreath now for your, your mammy's hall dough. And the last thing I'm going to say is we really want you to share this. Yeah. Okay. Listen, girls and boys, okay, I want everybody to click share, share it, because um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build up our social media um, followers, get our name kind of out there with Google and so on. And we can only really do this if you all actually click share. So we're really, really dependent on you. So be nice and click share. Now, another bunch of foliage that I bought in from Red Cross, uh, from Stuart Williams Foliage Farm. I always call this Silver Sussex. But I think the proper name is backwards, Sussex Silver. And it's just coming into flower at the moment. Can they see that, the flower? Yeah, no, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's absolutely beautiful and it lasts for ages and it just dries out. So it's absolutely perfect to use in your dories. And if anybody's from a garden centre or from a flower shop and they're selling um, Silver Sussex or Sussex Silvers, maybe put up the advertisement there because I definitely would recommend everybody, if you have space in your garden, to buy one of these and um, get it planted. So basically what I'm doing to the pieces is about 15 inches long. You can see there I'm being very irregular about it. You know that way, and I'm a bit, no, no bin here, I'm throwing it on the floor. I'm pretending I'm throwing it in the bin. And again, the same thing there, kind of cut down in between it and make a few little pieces. So that's what I want you to do is go out to your garden and if you're taking it off your own trees, or if Ashlyn is robbing this down in Sligo, the YouTube video is getting moved around at the moment. Sorry for that, it's a bit shaky. But um, if you're going out to your garden, just bring your scissors out to the garden and cut the ivy off the tree or off the wall, like approximately that length. And the same thing with the silver Sussex, cut that off the wall or off your tree or your shrubs, approximately that length. Rather than brining the branches, like, or rather than cutting the branches, just like what I have here and then you have an awful lot of waste to get rid of especially with someone else's tree leave all the wastage on their tree but obviously if you're buying it from the foliage growers or if you're buying it from a flower shop you will be buying it in in branches or in bunches like that and then you can just cut it up yourself so make sure you make notes as we go along of what we're using otherwise you're going to have to go back to the very beginning and re-watch it to get a list of the ingredients so the next thing you're going to need are 20 gauge wires so 20 gauge wires are the heavier wires. You can get 22, which are light. They would do. If that's all you have at home, they would actually work out for you. But I recommend to use the 20 gauge wires, florist wires. You'll buy them in any local flower shop. Again, if you're a flower shop and you sell bunches of wires, please put your link up with your advertisement. And then anybody that's watching can contact you to buy the wires. Now what I want you to do then is get a couple of little strands of the ivy. It's very hard to say how many pieces to get because it depends on how bulky or how chunky it is, okay? And then I want you to take up a couple of pieces of the silver Sussex, you know that way? And you're just making little bunches like that. Now you can see how crooked and mad looking that is. So in other words, it doesn't have to be real tidy. You're pinching the ends of them together. You're getting your 20 gauge wire. I call it a hairpin bend. Can you see that little hook there that I have with the wire? I'm resting it on the end and I'm basically wrapping the wire around all them stems to hold them all together. So that's kind of like what I'm doing. And I haven't a clue how many bunches it's going to take me. This bunch of ivy is a bit chunky once I'm just using the one on its own. This silver Sussex is chunky, so I'll probably just use our hair. We'll stick in this little baby one as well. Pinch the ends of them together. Get your 20 gauge wire. You could also use some twine, some hand tied twine or baling, baling twine, isn't that what the farmers use? So a bit of baling twine or string or anything at all, even strong wool. And you could wrap that around the ends of it again, just to hold in peace. Dave was after having a fly landed a slug. on a slug. A slug landed on. It was a Wicklow slug. A Wicklow slug. And That's the thing. When we buy in the stuff, you get the slugs, the spiders, the ladybirds. Like, what's sucking me? Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> blood sucker. Blood sucker. Uh, Joe Muldrew said that the Silver Sussex is very hard to get. Um, I have a growing uh, garden yeah. centre. So pick it up. Well, in the we did centre. have a problem. Do you remember when buying it originally? Yeah. And then one of our students knew we were looking for it. She found it in a garden centre and she contacted us. And um, I remember we put up the link, and then everybody, I think they, that garden centre sold sold out the Silver Sussex. Yeah. So again, any garden centres or flower shop that's watching, put up the link and let us know that you're selling the Silver Sussex. So next thing you need is a wire ring. Now you don't have to have one as big as I'm using here, okay? Um, and you could make this out of two co-hangers. I was planning on having a co-hanger one organized, but to be honest, I forgot about it. There was a lot happening this week, so I forgot about it. So I'm just going to use the, the actual wire ring that we buy in from, well, we buy them in from the wholesalers. You can buy them in from your local flower shop. So again, any flower shops that's watching, post a photograph of the wire rings that you have, just to show you, they come in different sizes. That's a smaller one. That's kind of a medium one. And that's the larger one. Do you see that I'm going to use there? But any of them, they'll turn out, they look much bigger when they're actually finished. So any of them sizes will do. Now, I do have them on our website under the Flower Sundry shop. And you can buy like a set of them in the three different sizes. I haven't got many of the medium ones left, by the way. But anybody that goes on first, you'll obviously get the, the small, the medium and the large. Or stick a little note in if you prefer three medium ones or... If you order all small ones, I'll probably just stick an extra one in because they work out a bit cheaper. And so, just low size flares is on. She's doing size. fabulous artificial wreaths at the moment. Absolutely. So, Sive, stick up the link to your uh, page there. So, Sive is doing gorgeous artificial, really luxurious looking artificial door wreaths. Um, anybody that's interested in buying one, pop over to Sive's page there and you can buy one from her. The next thing you're going to need is a roll of real wire. Now, some people call this mossing wire. I call it real wire. It's exactly the same thing, by the way. And again, a ball of twine wouldn't do the same job if that's all you had. And what you need to do is attach your real wire or your twine, you see, to your wire ring. And I just kind of like normally give it two or three twists and that is cut, that's a cut on. Now, when I sell the kit to make the, um, the door wreaths, I normally sell you, as I said, the three wire rings and the roll of real wire. Now on the site, there isn't a bunch of 20 gauge wires included in the jewelry set, but for what I'm doing today, you will need 20 gauge wires. So again, anybody that's ordering it this morning, I'm automatically just going to add in a bunch of 20 gauge wires into the well, set, today, no extra charge, that's of just June. today, 12th of June, anybody watching this at a later stage, okay? Because the kits are normally made up in advance, so they don't normally have the wires included in them. So now I need to open my big, bale of uh, a <laughs> farmer straw hope there's no mice in this could straw be spiders in could it. be spiders in this you never know what you're going to get so you get your straw and we pull it out here we go jamie mackett you wouldn't think i was a farmer's wife would you so there we go <laughs> definitely not rolling around in the hay or the straw for me anyway this definitely is not for me so anyway we pull out our straw and our hay now i are straw and hay whatever you want to call it I have done demonstrations, or I definitely have videos up on YouTube, of me making these bases using moss. So anybody that can get their hands on moss, just Google Case Flare School on YouTube, and you'll see the video. And I've also put up videos on YouTube of me making the bases using cupress branches or, la or lay lavender Ashlyn branches. says you don't pull the straw out like that. <laughs> This is how I pull it, Ashley. So what you're going to do to your straw then is you're going to bunch it all together, right? All them fecky little bits as well. So bunch them all together in your hand and like be quite thick with it. Like, you know what I mean? Don't be, don't be sparingly with it. And I often describe this that you're making a big fat sausage, okay? With your bale of straw. So what you're going to then do, straws all over the place here, you're then going to rest it. Now it's easier to do this on the table. You're going to rest your piece of straw on the wire ring and you're going to wrap the real wire around it. But it's easier for me if I actually do it on the flat of the table. So I'm going to rest that down on the table, get my real wire and again I'm going to wrap it around and I'm going to pull it really tight. So when I'm pulling the wire, can they see this on the table? Yeah, yeah. So when I wrap the wire around, pull it really tight, wrap it around, pull it really tight, wrap it around pull it really tight and I'm probably putting about two or three centimeters space you know that way in between each of the, the wire wraps as I wrap it around hopefully you can see that up close there so I just got to the end of my fat sausage I'm now going to get another bale of straw or sausage of straw bundle it all together squeeze it in all them fecky little bits of straw as well there we go I'm going to rest it onto the wire ring 
barely overlapping the last sausage okay so just catch it on there and again around you go with the real wire and as i said it's easier to do this flat on the table don't try to do it up in the air so here we go round and around and around leaving about two or three centimeters gap in between them and then i'm ready for the next sausage so you do the call outs there dear yeah, no, i actually think we might have a little competition okay they're a bit quiet now are they they are. very yeah, quiet okay quiet now they are so and we've over 120 people watching so What's going on? Anyway. They're, all, they're all probably Googling where they're going to get the straw. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> they're probably all Googling, um, what's that paper they have there in the country? The Farmer's, the farmer's, farmer's Journal. Journal. They're probably all Googling the Farmer's Journal there now to see what's the price of straw this week in County Sligo. So Ashlyn, we give you a job there. Google the price of straw there now. Mary Morrissey says, how much was the straw and where did we get it? So we got the straw in a pet shop. There's a pet shop, we're in Rialto, and there's a pet shop on a road called Keeper Road. And it's called Jungle Book or Jungle Jungle, Jungle something it. anyway is the name of the pet shop. And the big bale of straw I showed you there was three euros fifty. Okay, and um, I probably would get about three out of it, kind of like judging the size of it there. I'd say if I just ripped the bag open, it'd all come out much easier. Yeah, um, we all over the place. We all over the place. So I'm trying to kind of keep the place a bit tidy. So you can see there, I'm gathering up the straw, bunching it all together like a fat sausage, resting it onto the ring, and around and around I'm going, just to let you see, that's how it's turning out. So dear 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 says, leave them all alone when they're quiet. <laughs> Uh, Joyce says straw sausages. <laughs> straw sausages. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, I think we might have a little giveaway. Um, so I am going to ask for what the name of one of the foliages that you use. Oh, okay. so that's an easy yeah, idea. So you're using Jesus. two foliages, and we want the name of one of the foliages. And we're going to take, because we have 120 people on, I'm going to take the 20th answer okay. um, on Facebook, and I'm going to take the 10th answer, answer on Instagram. And where do you want to win? What are they going to win? What are they going to win? Uh, we'll send them out a kit. Right, we'll send you a free kit then. So that's the three wire rings in the different sizes. The roll of real wire and the bunch of 20 gauge wires. And we might even throw in the ribbon and all that we're going to be using today. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. not throwing in the straw. No, we're not your own it. straw. <laughs> <laughs> this straw is priceless. <laughs> um, Deirdre Pike says Zoo City and Liffey Valley that they sell the straw as well. Fair play to you, Deirdre. Ring them up there and see how much the bales of straw are and what size they are. That's a fairly small bag, by the way, that I'm using. Yeah, because actually I've got bigger bags before from them. So I'm nearly around to, I am around to where I started. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back around with the real wire a second time just to basically tidy that up. Ashley says she's still in the middle of looking up the price of straw. What was the question? <laughs> The question was, well, you have one of these wire rings, Ashley, and you don't be entering the competition, Jamie Mack. <laughs> and by the way, you can get the Farmer's Journal in Dublin. <laughs> That's right. My husband buys the Farmer's Journal every week, he does. So, um, what was the week there the other day? Oh, I think it was only yesterday or the day before. Uh, the farmers are being encouraged now to retire and they want to get a retirement scheme. Oh, right. That's there you go. go. Oh, See? Poor farmers. Poor farmers. So, um, so, yeah, so, so how are we going on the questions? Are the answers? Yeah, lots of answers coming answer. in. So, so we're looking just... for the name of the greenery that I used at, that I mentioned at the beginning. I am, I'm using two. So name one of them. The 20th answer, you can answer as many times as you want, by the way. We say the 20th answer just to be a little bit fair. And remember, our internet could work at a different pace at, to yours. So adjudicator's decision is final here at Case Fire School. <laughs> no arguing about it, okay? And the winner is going to get a set of the three wire rings, the roller reel wire, the 20 gauge wires, and I'm also going to throw in a samples of the ribbons that we're going to be using that they can make their own dory. They have to go and source their own straw and their own foliage. So I'm back around to the beginning there. That's my straw base made. Have to be honest, it's tough on the hands, okay? I'm then going to cut the wire off and the bit of wire that's left over, I'm going to stick it back down into the base. Now, I'd say if you store all these on their side, I don't have experience on storing straw or hay or how long it's going to last. So if anybody asks me how long is this going to last, it's definitely going to last. The farmers will be able to tell us. But any of the cultures that are looking there, Bernie Horley, how long is this straw going to last? In a dry place, I would presume. Normally with the moss ones and the greenery ones, I store them on their side. I normally tell people to put like a sweep and rush handle kind of between the two of them, suspend it between, you know, two raised platforms whatever let the air say, circulate around them and the thing about these bases they can be reused again by the way so when the material dies take it off you can still reuse the base again and these can be used for the autumn wreaths the christmas wreaths the spring wreaths and obviously the summer wreaths so that's all we straw done so just to show you i still have all that amount left in the bale 
So I didn't even use a quarter of it. So that was a fine bale of straw there. And I'm not even going to pick that up there. I'm going to so get like it in. So you probably have used a euro's worth of straw, would you have? Oh, uh, well, if the bag was 350 and we used a quarter. That's less than 350, yeah, yeah. yeah, or less than a euro. And that's 350, obviously, including VAT, so there's no VAT on that. No VAT, no VAT in the, in the pet shop. The price is the price. So a bit of a tidy up there, right? So I have all the green made into bunches. So it's a bit like um, the one in the oven. Mary okay. Morris has said it'll last forever. There you go. Okay, that's great to know. That's something like your Christmas wreaths that you could actually start. And like anybody that is in the country, and I'm dead serious here now, and you can get a big, big bale of straw, get yourself the wire rings and make all the frames there. Store them in the shed, you know, that way. Like, yeah. don't put them out in the open. And you can use them then all at Christmas for making your Christmas wreaths. And we have demonstrations and online courses on Christmas wreaths nearer the time. Joel so, Mackey says, last two years out of the paddocks. There so, you go. Yeah. There you go. So he's obviously a horsey person. Yeah. But, yeah I think I'm eating <laughs> <laughs> I'm all saying it last for ages. Brilliant. Yeah. So that's actually even better than the Leylandi or, or the Q Press or the Moss, where normally the Leylandi, I kind of say two to three months approximately. Right, for our birthday celebrations, and I can't remember the date, but it was the end of May anyway. We had a night on here, and I was using you green hydrangeas. I was drunk, and I was using green hydrangeas. You were drunk as well. And we were using green hydrangeas. And um, at the time, like, I went into about treating the hydrangeas, and I have to say, I really kind of, like, looked after them. TLC, Tender Loving Care, really looked after these hydrangeas. And they lasted for about two weeks, they did. They were brilliant. And when they were kind of, like, you know what I mean, they were nearly on their last legs, I said to David, you know what, we'll dry these. So I just pulled them out of the arrangements, and all I did was I wrapped a wire around the end of them, and I just kind of, like, hung them, do you know what I mean? Just that they kind of hung in that direction. You could hang them off your banisters, hang them out of the ceiling. We always have baskets hanging around the classroom, kind of like from the, from the top of the wall. So I just hooked them wires up around the baskets and left them like that. And as you can see, they're absolutely, you can hear them that they are dried, like nice and crispy, but um, they look absolutely, I think they just look phenomenal. And they cost me nothing. Now the hydrangeas are coming into flower in your garden. Um, very soon. My ones haven't come into flare yet, but they will be coming very soon. Or again, anybody that maybe has hydrangeas as a present, you know, that way. And rather than just like letting them die and throw them in the bin, why don't you dry them? And then you could actually include them into a summer wreath or even an autumn wreath. Now, how did I treat them? Well, first of all, um, it, I do have a blog on my website. So if you go to the website, go to the blog button, scroll down, how to prolong the life of hydrangeas. I have like a full article there, how to actually treat hydrangeas. So this is really, really fast. I remove all the leaves that's on the stem of the hydrangeas. I leave the one or two leaves up the very, very top. Them ones have been removed at this stage. But I normally leave the one or two little baby leaves up the very top. I cut the ends on a sharp, sharp kind of like 45 degree angle. I cut about an inch or two off the end of them. I dip them in quick dip, which is kind of like a solution to hydrate the flowers really fast. And I put them into a vase of cold water. Then after a while, what I normally do is I, when they've had kind of a drink, is I take them out of the bucket of water and I turn the heads upside down and leave the heads submerged underwater for about 15 or 20 minutes. Then I turn them back up the right way, recut a shaving off the end of them and put them back into the cold water. Now, the next day, normally what I do is I warm up a vase or a bucket with boiling water. So you know you're making a pot of tea and the way you'd warm up the teapot. Well, I do the exact same thing to my vases. So I get a vase, I pour boiling water into it, I swish it around as if I'm trying to warm up the vase. I empty that little sloppy water out of it. I then refill it with about three inches of boiling water. So it's literally boiling because the vase is actually hot. I recut the end of the hydrangeas that the day before they had been in cold water, they got the quick dip and the heads had been submerged in the cold water as well, right? So Deirdre's laughing there to the dirty joke. I'm going to keep going or she'll put me off. I then put the hydrangeas back into the boiling water and I leave them in the boiling water for about four hours. Now it's not going to be boiling in four hours, it's going to go cold very quick. And then I often recut them again. I submerge the heads, I put them back into a bucket of cold water with flour food in them. And I would do the repeat that treatment every two to three days, and you can get about two weeks out of the hydrangeas. So that's what I meant by prolonging the life of it. That's a lot to take in. I've explained it very fast. So go to the blog on the website, flareschoolireland.com, scroll down, how to prolong the life of hydrangeas, and you get all the information. Tell us what you're laughing about there. <laughs> well, Deirdre Pike says, 
Well, it's great to see you using the bucket and not the floor for all the leftover folk. Absolutely. Do you know, do you know I mean, a few people pulled me up over it, think they were Americans, and they were giving out about it. So I says, here, I better have a bin under the table. And sometimes I can't find the bin and I do pretend I'm thrown in the bin, but I still am thrown on the floor. I am. I'm the dirtiest worker ever. When you start going there, I'll Okay, get, I'll... so now I'm ready to get started. So... This, um, I'm going to keep, instead of dividing the hydrangeas all over the wreath, I've only got 10 of them because there's only 10 in the bunch, I'm going to keep them all down one end of it, kind of like in a horseshoe shape. So what I'm going to start off first is with a little bit of greenery. So get a piece of greenery, place it onto your straw base, okay? First of all, attach the wire. So to attach the wire, hold it with your thumb, go around the same space, two or three or four times. Again, do this on the table and it saves you unraveling the wire, okay? So go around the same spot, two or three or four times there, just to attach it. Get your first little bunch of greenery, rest it straight onto the um, straw base, and then you get your real wire and you go around that spot about three times, pulling it nice and tight. Now this is the secret. When you've rent around that spot two or three times, kind of come over this way slightly on an angle. And that allows then that when you get the second bunch, that you're in the right spot, you see, to catch it on. Now, I want to make this a little bit chunky. So what I'm going to do is when I add in the second bunch, rather than keeping it, there's a little spider on me here. You can feel them on the hairs of my arm. <laughs> so when I'm um, placing this on, I'm going to go kind of a little bit zigzagged, as in a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. I'll show you now what I mean. So I've just added that one kind of going a little bit to the outside, and now I'm going to add one a little bit to the inside. And you can see each time I ground the real wire about three times. Now I'm kind of going a little bit to the outside, there we go, and then we'll go a little bit to the inside. So you'll see then that will make the wreath much chunkier than if you kept it, you see, straight onto the base. Now, at this stage, I want to add, start adding in the hydrangeas. So when I'm adding in the bunch of greenery, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the hydrangea flower, you see on top of it, and I'm going to keep the hydrangea flower that is in the centre. So again, I'm wrapping the wire around this two or three times. Now I want to get some greenery, a little bit to the outside, wrap that on, and then I'm going to wrap another bunch of greenery a little bit to the inside. So did you find a winner there, dear? Yeah, I have two winners. Oh, right. I have uh, Mary Trace Gordon and I have Peggy McLaughlin. All right, so congratulations. So PM us or DM us or email us with your um, postal address and we'll have that in the post to you today. Brilliant. Fairly Hurley says the straw will last for years, but remember if you're spraying the flowers or foliage, it will only last about a month because it'll rot and it'll smell. Right, yeah. so that's great, a very great good tip there. Right, very good. Thanks a million for that, Fairly. Fair play to you. That's the thing about the cultures, you know everything, don't, don't you? Do you can that. always depend on the cultures. Yeah. They keep um, us dubs educated. <laughs> Joyce McDonough says, great idea about the hydrangeas. Can you do the same with peonies? You could. They wouldn't dry out as good, I don't think. I think you might need a bit of glycerine with the peonies because they're a much kind of softer type of petal. Being honest, I'm not 100% sure. So again, if there's anybody watching, maybe a flare shop is watching, and they might have a little bit of information there about drying out the peonies, they could maybe give us a little bit of advice there. Now just to kind of show you, do you see how this is working? And what you could do is you could keep them maybe just to one side as well, if you wanted, if you didn't want to go around the whole way. You could also allow some of your straw base still to show. You know what I mean? If you didn't want to cover the straw base in completely, you could allow that to show too. Caroline yeah. says, um, when it's dry, you could spray it with gold or silver for Christmas. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. the straw base. Yeah, that, no, but oh, the the well, yeah, yeah, that would be lovely as well. Absolutely. Joyce McDonough says he's not drunk, it's socially excited. <laughs> what is? <laughs> By the after party. All oh, right. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the hydrangeas. Because you know when I'm here at the school, I often talk about the drunk man when I'm showing them how to um, add in their... Um positioning their flowers and kind of like getting them to lie back i have this talk i have this kind of say about the drunk man whatever uh, and darity nice. wants to know what's the straw called and where can she buy it s-t-r-o straw straw and it's obviously in loads of different languages there so you can learn it there in romanian dutch french spanish Italian, English, and Irish. I haven't got a clue what languages it is anyway. But basically, straw. Um, farmers, go down the country. Pet shop. Pet shops, that's where I bought it. And again, what you can do, missed her name, what was her name? Uh, what you can do is go Dorothy. back to the very beginning of this video, Dorothy, and you'll see where I gave kind of like the full instructions at the very beginning. May Chan says, thanks for the tips on the hydrangea. Can I post the link? to the thing because her English is not good and she didn't find out where the blog is. Yeah, I'm no problem. Post, I'll actually post it now under her comment. 
Um, Bernie, no, she hates them. Oh, the spiders. Oh, the spiders, yeah. I have a load of green fly in the garden, Bernie, um, and I know I probably I know the should have. Me roses. Well, they could be white flies or green flies. Sure, I'm as blind as a bat anyway, but they're little flies anyway. And um, at the moment, because of the gyms being closed, I'm doing my gym class by a Zoom class in the mornings out in the back garden. And the roses are walking um, with the green flies or white flies, and they're lighting on me. And you know, they're the tiniest little ones. They're in among the hairs on your arm there trying to get them. Now, I'm nearly going to, let me see... Yeah, I'm going to put in my last hydrangea now at this stage because I don't want the hydrangea just going all the way around it. I want to leave like a little space, okay? So I'm going to add in the last hydrangea. Yeah, you can. I have enough of them and it could go the whole way around if I want it, but I don't want it. <laughs> okay is on and of course I'm late, but it's overcast in Claire and I hope it clears up. It's not too shy it's today. It's not too shy today in Claire K. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to put up a photograph, Kay, of what you look like, because it's absolutely gas. As I said, um, my beautician, her mum is from County Clare, and she had a heart attack one day when she heard me saying about Kay in County Clare, because her mum is Kay as well. And she says, I hope to God that's not my mother, she says, on about the weather being shite in County Clare. Mm. So I'm just at the last bit of uh, greenery, just kind of adding it in. I probably need to make up just one or two more bunches. You see, just for the end here, just to kind of finish it off. Now, as I said, this has red just is right yeah. now to loose, actually. That's better, actually. It's working out better for me now. Yeah. I just want to add in another little bit of greenery up the top. Haven't got enough bunches made, so I'm going to make up another couple. Now, somebody's going to say, how many bunches did you use? I had 20 bunches made up, so... Um, now I'm on 21, right? Um, Maria Devereaux is on. Maria oh, Maria Devereaux. Um, she has a little boy. She was tidying up her garden there a while ago. <laughs> and she's on the radio. So don't know what station. Haven't got a clue. Should I listen to you all the time, No, Marie? today FM. Today, today FM. FM. Um, I'm not sure. Two lads in the morning, morning. yeah. Hey, I'm laying back to me, I use a mix of lots of water and a little bit of washing up liquid and a teaspoon of white vinegar in a bottle to spray to get rid of green flies. Oh, well, God. I'm what time are you coming down tonight and maybe get rid of me green flies? <laughs> Um, when yes. I'm adding in these last little bunches, I don't want to flatten down what I've got, you know what I mean, with the real wire, I don't want to kind of come around. So I call it the wiggling, wangling technique. So kind of like wiggle your wire in between your bunches so that you're not actually flattening down. To be honest, you'll cop onto it yourself when you get to that stage. So again, I'm just going to add in one more bunch. And Bernadette Kay will say the same thing, a bit of washing up liquid with white vinegar and water for the roses. Well, she and Bernadette's yeah. only up in Clundalk and she could yeah, pop she down could, there and with the washing up liquid. as well at the same time, couldn't she? Mine is white fly though, I wonder if it's do the same thing. Or maybe mine are just albinos. <laughs> is that politically correct to say? Albinos, no, is, yeah, white no. flies? I'll be so you think that'll be no fish. <laughs> okay, I don't know whether that was politically correct, what you ever said. It but is, anyway. yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's our last bit of greenery there just got in. Just wanted to catch in that last bit of oh, ivy no, there. Instagram, that that Instagram. And so. then what I'm going to do is the last bit of wire that's left over, I'm going to stick it back down into the straw base at the back. So I'm just cutting off the real wire and then the little bit of wire that's left over here, I'm just going to wiggle and wangle it in between bits of straw and the bits of wire there at the back just to secure it that it won't unravel that's what the back of it looks like so you can see the way i just have the hydrangeas at the bottom of it okay now i have three hydrangeas left over so i probably nearly could have went the whole way around if you want to but i just thought i'd do this design a little bit different so material wise what have we got okay i have this um green organza ribbon which i describe as a sick green color and i mean that in the nicest possible way because i actually love this color but how do you describe it green. kind of a mossy sort of a green color and i have this hessian ribbon because again i just kind of thought with the straw this would be nice so what i'm going to do is measure out a uh, length of the hessian ribbon and the girls who want the kits i'll add this hessian ribbon into your sets as well okay so what you're then going to do is with the Hessian ribbon, pretend that you're making a scarf or a collar around somebody's neck, right? And you're kind of catching it under, this, under their chin. I often say to my students, it'd be like your granny putting a scarf around her neck and then she catches it there and she puts a brooch in it. But what I'd be doing that in, but I can't actually make the bow around my own neck. So pretending around the granny's neck, crossing it under the chin, you see that sort of effect? Bring the back of the bow into the front of it, and you see the way you get the bow effect? Hopefully you can see that there. Yeah. And then I'm going between the tops of my fingers, you can see I've no nails, waiting on the nail places to open up. I'm now going to squash, scrunch, gather, and squeeze. Squash that in as much as you can. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie it with a wire, but you could tie it with a piece of ribbon. So you can get your 20 gauge wire, 
wrap it around the center there just to hold it and basically twist the two pieces of wire together at the back. A piece of ribbon will do the same job. Then what you can do is you can get the ends of your straw ribbon or your hessian, which is the proper name for it, and do that fancy little V cut into it just that you get that nice little V to see at the bottom. So now that I'm going to make it in the organza. So you get a length of the organza. Mr. Jeanette, somebody's asking and um, the date for the next online module one. Okay, the next um, is the 13th of July. So the module one online program, 13th of July, four week membership of the Bloom Room, 90 days access to the online tutorials. And you have the pleasure of me and Deirdre for four weeks in the Bloom Room at your beck and call. And a few people that are in the Bloom Room at the moment that are on, maybe they might comment and tell yes, us. Yes, yeah. tell everybody else how you're getting on on your online programme. Better say something nice because I get you in the Bloom Room later on tonight if you say that in bad money slagging. Now to make it with the organza, squeeze it in. Because people when they're making the bows with the organza, they think they have to keep that really neat and tidy. You don't. Get it there and squash it in. Again, a bit like your granny putting her scarf around their neck. Same idea. Round the neck. Cross it under the chin in the front, hold it, get the back of the bow, bring it into the front of the bow, squash it in there as much as you can. And again, you can use a wire or a piece of string, wrap the wire around the center. I'm just using the wire for handiness because it's beside me. Squash it in and wrap one wire around the other. And then you can go back with the organza and then you can open it out to see as wide or as full as you want. Where people think they have to try and use it really neat, where you just go back afterwards and you can open it out. And then the ends I normally find, I just cut straight across rather than doing any little fancy cuts on them. Now with this bow, I can decide, and actually I don't know, will I do the organza in front of the hessian or will I use the organza? I think the other way. The other way? Yeah, I, yeah, I think that way, yeah. Okay, so we go for that way. But you could do it the other way, but Deirdre's actually telling us that way. So what I'm just doing now is I'm kind of like pressing the two of these together, the organza on top of the um, hessian. I'm going to wrap one of the wires around the two of them just to kind of hold them together to see all in the one go. And then the wires at the back here, I'm just going to wrap one that's around the other. Only, that's what they'll only need the wires for, is just the bow, isn't it? Well, no, to make the little bunches as oh, well. The bunches to as make well, the little right. bunches of green. Just so that's why I'm adding in the bunch of 20 gauge wires. Anybody ordering the kits today? Yeah. And um, Geraldine Whelan says oh, she doesn't have silver, so like she's failed miserably to be able to buy a shrub of it. Um, could you use box instead? Box would be brilliant, and that lasts for ages as well. You see, it's only some foliage, it's like some of the soft foliage. I'm saying like Wajini or something like that, that wouldn't last at all. It'd end up just falling on the floor and you'd be hoovering up. You want something that kind of dries out. The ivy is great and the silver Sussex is great and the box is good. And the washing up liquid works on white flies too. Okay, yeah, the other ones. So what I'm now going to do with my wire is I'm going to stick it down into the straw base. So I'm just sticking the wire through oh, the top of it. Kay well, is going to book onto the module one in July. So oh, she's going, going to get to see her. <laughs> Michelle Cross on set, oh God love her. She's just finished grading the leaving certs. And this has been the best distressor ever, um, listening to the pair of us. Now, my son's girlfriend <laughs> is doing the leave insert and she needs a H1 <laughs> to get the course that she wants. I'll send her her name later on. <laughs> Juliana, if you're watching, don't worry, I look after you. So here's my wire after coming through. Can you see here at the back? So I just basically stuck it through one side, out through the other. And all I'm going to do then is, where am I letting go of it, is stick that wire back up into the straw base. It goes up no problem at all. Force with your thumb, squash it in there. Now you can decide to hang it on the door with the bow at the top, or I could easily twist the bow around and I could have it hanging on the door with the bow no. facing the other way, but I actually think it looks nicer this way. And then if you want to make a little hanger to hang it on the door, are we, we going looking for that. are we going looking for a nice hall door later on? Are oh, we, we have to get find a nice hall door. Anyone lives in Dublin with a nice hall door? <laughs> uh, not too far. We have to be sit. Are we still within the five? No, I think you're allowed to twenty kilometres. Oh, I think I'm you can stay within your county. No, I have loads on today. I'm not going. I'm not going to. Um, Anne Kelleher said, "I love module one course. The girls are um, great at explaining." Anne, thanks, so. Angela King says she's having the time of her life doing module one. The online tutorials and videos are so well put together. Thanks, uh, layman's Angela. terms. Can't wait to do the practicals. Uh, Joan says, Joan Muldrew says, best course you'll ever do. They couldn't improve it anymore. Ah, thanks a million, Joan. Um, who else have we got? A couple more comments coming in here. Elaine says, the wreath is gorgeous. What ah, base did we use for the silk flares? I go back, oh, oh, the silk flares. <laughs> I was going to say, what base did I was going to say, go back to the feckin' beginning of the video and watch it. Uh, no, but you could use the straw for the, base, for the silk flares. Oh, yeah, yeah, the silk ones definitely, or you can use the twig ring bases. I'll do that another day. I'll use the twig ring, ring bases, and I'll show you how you can make a twig ring base as well. Um, but today I used a straw one because again I've done lots of video tutorials using the Q-Press and the Leilande and the Moss. 
So there's our door reach there, ready to hang on the door. Stop. And again, I could turn around and say, it didn't really cost me much to do. Now I did buy in the Ivy and Silver Sussex because if you knew where I live, I live off one of the main South Circular Roads in Dublin and my garden is very, very tiny. Deirdre has got loads of greenery up in her garden. So it could work out quite inexpensive to make for anybody in the country. Liam said a bale of straw in Sligo is about three euro. So it's cheaper in Sligo to buy your bale of straw. Is that the big square bales? Yes, yeah, the square it, bales. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how much is them big circle ones? You know the massive big ah. circle ones? <laughs> I know, but in case we want to get ready for Christmas. <laughs> deliver to your garden yeah of course yeah well, you have great. a big garden thanks a million for that Liam so um not early Liam is it yeah yeah Liam Mitchell yeah Ashling is telling oh Ashling said that. <laughs> I was thinking Liam Mitchell wasn't on Facebook <laughs> following me um what was I going to say there so it can work out quite inexpensive to make thanks a million for that Ashling by the way forget that information for us um, you could get your greenery out of your own garden or somebody else's garden. When the hydrangeas come into flower, you could use them fresh as well. But what happens when you use them fresh is they'll just die and the petals will wilt on them. Where if you dry them out first and then put them onto your door wreath, absolutely it's going to last for ages. Um, when everything is dead, strip it all off and you can reuse the straw base again and you can use the bows again. Somebody wants to know how to sign up for module one. I'll post the link. Do it, I'll post the link in the comments below and you can get all and the information. Somebody's asked to order the kit, the same thing. I'll post the link for the kit then as well. And remember um, with the kit, the kit comes with three rings. I'm missing the big one. Oh, there's a big one. So that's the big one that I've just used now, but it also comes with a medium one and a smaller one. Again, if you look back to about two weeks ago, I'd done a fab, well, I thought it was a fabulous door hanging with three different ones all. We used the, um, the Cianotis from Deirdre's Garden. Now, when you order the kit, you'll get your three rings, you'll get your roll of real wire, and I'm going to add in the bunch of wires because it's not normally in the kit, but for this particular wreath, you do need the 20 gauge wires. So I'm going to add in a bunch. There's no extra charge. It'll be whatever price it is on the website. I'm going to add that in as well. Um, just a few more comments. Um, Joe Muldrew, what large flowers are available now that you could do this and say my hydrangeas aren't out? You can buy them in the shop, the hydrangeas. Yeah, buy the silk hydrangeas. Or, or buy silk ones, hydrangeas yeah. or buy fresh ones and dry them yourself. Or maybe some roses out of your garden you know like say big blown garden mm -hmm. roses you could dry them you know that way again if you treat them up condition them right first that's what you need to do Kathy and then, wants to know Kathy Bannon wants to know can you use the straw for fresh flower base and um, the idea of a fresh flower base is that it has moisture to keep it moist so that's why normally we would use maybe the moss because it's like a sponge and it holds water or even the Leilandi kind of is damp but yes you could at the end of the day like they're not going to be in water they're only going to last a certain amount of time the straw will be fine and I have used the straw for fresh bases a lot of time what I might do for the flowers is you know the tiny little water vials you know the little test tubes kind of I would you can get tiny little ones I would put the flower into a little test tube and I'd hide it in among the greenery and wrap the wire around the tube as well to secure it and the flower then is getting a little drink of water so that's what I would do there and um, 25 euro for the big bales Mary Morris has said thanks a million Mary <laughs> I'll be off to order them next I'm going online now to order get hundreds of reeds though like that's oh, like actually much cheaper than the moss it would be much cheaper and you can't get moss it's impossible yeah. to get the moss Fairly Hurley says I've done the modules at the school and I'm doing the online one at present and loving it thanks Fairly. she was concerned before and about not knowing how she find it, but it's fantastic. She's and uh, the detail visiting all the. I think the big stuff. thing people were worried about with the online was with Wi-Fi and Zoom and logging in. We've done it completely different. Our online class is not like anybody else's online class because we put a lot of thought and effort into it. So they're all pre-recorded, but yet you're still going to be getting the interaction from ourselves. So it means you can watch it at your own pace. It's zoomed in, it's videoed from different angles all the time. So it's nearly impossible not to kind of get all the little techniques. We're actually amazed like with the bowls and stuff. Oh, like I'm absolutely, like to be honest, I was only saying that to Deirdre, one of them little flies is on me again, I can feel the hairs on my arm. Um, I was only saying to Deirdre there the other day, when I would be doing a classroom based class here and you demonstrate how to make the bowls, you'd normally get maybe two or three, get it straight away and you get a couple of shite bows you know what I mean as Kay and County Clare would say but you know what with the videos with them watching the video and re-watching it and again seeing it from the different angles and then making the bow the amount of them that posted in the bloom room this was their first bow that they made and oh my god they were absolutely amazing they done really really well so 
this weekend they're all starting well monday but some people are going to start over the weekend they're going to start making all their practicals because as i said the flower arrangement the flowers are all getting delivered to them tonight they got all their kits delivered there last week so they're all set and all ready to actually start making the arrangements so we post Deirdre's what they're just going to do is they're all posting photographs in the bloom room which obviously you don't have any access to but Deirdre's going to then could get a lot of the photographs and make like a little video, you know what I mean? And then we post it on this page and we let you see what's happening over in the bloom room. Uh, Judy Aldrich, I probably shouldn't read this out, but anyway, she said, This is beautiful. I'm going over in over I'm going over in a couple of days to rob my sister in law's hydrangeas. Just post most, Judy, she, post your sister's address and we'll all go over. And she says she has the most beautiful blue. Hope you're not watching this, Francis. I'm on my way. <laughs> Francis, we'll be all over. Uh, I, I, Deirdre likes Nest Cafe coffee. She's real fussy about her coffee. Cup of tea will do me grand. <laughs> right, so that's, right, so that's yeah. it. Listen, we've nothing else to tell you. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Again, please, please, please click share. Click share. Let's get the word out there. Um, like, as I said, we get lots of views, but I need everybody to click the share. Even if it comes up, watch party. Share, 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 share. Really appreciate it. Any questions, post them in the comments. I'll come back on later on and I respond to everybody that has commented and um, again anybody that's looking for links I post them all in the comments below have a great day talk to you all later bye bye